Hi, this is Victoria Nolley and here with me again is Professor Peter Cameron. As I mentioned in my previous videos, Professor Cameron is the director of the Center for Energy, Petroleum, Mineral Law and Policy at the University of Dundee. Today we are going to focus on three topics. The first one will be we'll be talking about decommissioning. The second one will be talking about local content provisions. And then the third one will explore more on the challenges energy investors face in the 21st century. But before we start, I'd like Professor Cameron to briefly introduce himself again. And this time he'll even tell us more about his books, publications, and the various projects he has, he has been involved in. Professor Cameron, would you like to briefly introduce? Thank you, Victoria, for that, that nice introduction. Uh, maybe I should just point out that I've, I've written quite a lot of books. Um, and I think uh, the last count, something like 14 books and, and almost 100 articles. Um, but the last one was, it was quite an interesting uh, book because uh, that was published a, 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 as an e-book. Um, mainly as an e-book, there were a few hard copies made. Uh, and uh, that was published by the World Bank and it was concerned with uh, energy strategy and governance issues, a very wide ranging set of topics. But it's now been downloaded almost 20,000 times, which is really a great compliment, I, I, I think, to all of us who were involved in the book because uh, it, it shows that the book is actually useful, uh, especially you. amongst developing countries, which is important to me personally. Thank you very much. And in his books, he has been covering various topics. That's why I thought it will be good for us to cover some of these key topics, especially the topics that are very important for developing countries in, in Africa. We're going to start with the topic of decommissioning of oil and gas installations. Uh, Professor Cameron, you've written a lot about decommissioning. So I'd like you to tell us what it entails. Well, I became interested, uh, Victoria, in decommissioning many years ago uh, when I was, I was actually working in the Netherlands. And uh, I, I, I wasn't working in Britain, but I, I knew that there had been a lot of discussions in Britain about how to safely um, and, and efficiently um, remove structures uh, pipelines, uh, rigs from um, uh, 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 fixed structures from, from the sea. Uh, so I was quite interested in this topic, but because I was based outside the UK um, uh, and because uh, I was asked to, to become involved with the United Nations in, in Asia um, in connection with this topic, what I wrote about was really a little bit unusual at the time because it was a comparative study that that looked at how countries outside of the North Sea area would prepare for this kind of massive removal and highly costly issue. Um, so that's how I came to it uh, as a topic many years ago. As a lawyer, I'd like you to tell us more about the legal framework of decommissioning. Well, that's a good question. There have maybe two parts to it though. Um, one is the forward-looking part, and one is the, 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 the retrospective view. Usually when governments come to deal with decommissioning, um, it's, at, it's close to the end of life of, of, um, of these various structures. Um, everybody gets very excited when the structures are getting put in place, about the, the, the prospects, potential. They tend, in the past at least, they tended to forget that at some point those structures would have to be removed. This is primarily offshore um, in, in water. Um, and it can be shallow water, it can be deep water. Putting in place a legal framework is not really terribly difficult now because you, you would pass your law, you would, you would set, out, you'd set out a regime and you could develop that by simply looking at how other countries have, have approached the matter. But the big challenge is not there, I think. I think that you can, you can do and you can leave governments, it could be Ghana, it could be Malaysia, whatever. They can, they can do all these things, they've got the right people. Um, where you have a problem is that usually by the time you start on this process, contracts have already been awarded or licenses. You may actually have a law in place that 
doesn't really deal with decommissioning or it deals with it very poorly by modern standards. Maybe the law, maybe the contracts are already 20, 25 years old. So that is when you have a real problem because you then have to, I would say, discuss the issue with the companies that are already in place. You don't, in my opinion, you don't just introduce legislation and say, you must do the following. That would be retrospective. And also it damages the relationship between the government and the companies. I think you have a conversation with them and emphasize cooperation with a view to dealing with a problem that affects both sides. Thank you very much, Professor Cameron. And then the last question is, uh, what should developing countries learn from developed countries with regard to decommissioning oil and gas installations? Well, I think, I think first, first of all, develop, developing countries are, aren't always at the same stage. You have, um, you have quite a number of African countries that have already got fairly good provisions in their laws because people were thinking more about decommissioning at the time that they introduced their petroleum laws. So their starting point isn't too bad. Um, that might surprise you, but I, I'm quite optimistic about that about them. All they need to do if they want to deepen those laws, uh, because they're probably still a little bit like frameworks, um, is just look at what other people are doing and borrow, because that's a completely legitimate thing to do. It's what everybody does. You make comparisons, always remembering that your own situation is unique. What applies in um, <clears throat> Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Sudan, wherever, is special what applies in Malaysia is, is unique, you know, that, 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 so you have to, to do that. Um, so I'm quite optimistic. When you get to Asia, you find the problems are rather different in the sense that often they have contracts that were given out a long time ago and what concerns cleanup or what we might call decommissioning is a bit basic and they, you, you just have to revise that somehow. Um, they, they have, have slightly more complicated um, issues. Also, you have to consider the, deep, the depth of the water. The structures might be quite, quite flimsy, quite, quite, quite easy to remove if you've got shallow water. So you might adopt a, an, a, an alternative use program, rigs to reef. Uh, the costs of removal might be quite modest. It's not every, everything that's like the North Sea. UK and Norway with these deep waters and very, very bad weather. So the costs might not be too bad. Thank you very much, Professor Cameron. That marks the end of our first video on decommissioning. The next one we shall be talking about local content provisions in the energy sector. Stay tuned.